Let's bring in Tony Dungy from Football Night in America. Tony, I don't know if you stayed up and watched the entire Vikings game last night. I know Leslie Fra- Frazier's a good friend, but you know what? Friendships be damned. Were you able to watch that whole game last night? I, I didn't watch the last three minutes of the game. It was uh, it was painful, and uh, you know both sides. It, it wasn't a lot of great football out there, but I know Minnesota really expected to get more of a charge out of Josh Freeman, and it just didn't happen. I don't understand the game plan, Tony. That I have Adrian Peterson. I just brought in Josh Freeman. He's only been there two weeks. I'm having throw it fifty three times. Well, what happened? And the Giants did, did a good thing. They said, you know what? We're not going to let Adrian Peterson go. As many guys as we have to stack the box, uh, we'll do it. Minnesota had a lot of one-on-one throws. They had just what they wanted, but they couldn't complete balls to those those receivers, and and that's been their problem all year. I mean, you've got Adrian Peterson. You know the kind of defenses you're going to be seeing. You've got to get a quarterback who can complete easy passes. All right, Adrian Peterson's future in Minnesota. At his age, uh, his salary – and what we think and, you know, how we use running backs now. Would they ever entertain the idea of trading Adrian Peterson? Well, I think you entertain it and you talk about it, but then let's say you trade Adrian Peterson. What do you really have? What what, what do you have to build around? Um, at least now with him, I know I've got one thing. I've got something that defenses have to deal with and handle, and I can build around that. Um I just I don't know where you go if you trade Adrian Peterson. It seems like it's a long term rebuilding project. Then, well, and I guess I would look at it. I'm not that far away. Um, we were in the playoffs last year. You look at these teams. Kansas City didn't add that much from a two and fourteen team to to winning. So I would look at it that way. I'm not that far away. I've got a major building block. If I can just put some other little pieces around and we get some stability. You know, we can win. This league is not that hard. So I guess if I was sitting there, I'd, I'd, even if I was an owner, I'd say, no, I don't know if I want to do that. But I looked at Kansas City, and they had all pros. They just underachieved. You had great individual talent there. And I think the same thing with Tampa. We talked about that on Sunday. Yeah. I think Tampa, whoever goes in, is going to get a playoff team. I, I think that, you know, and I, granted, you got to find your everyday, every weekend quarterback, but – I don't know if I see that in Minnesota. Secondary's not good. You got some older guys on that team, and you have to, I guess, decide if Josh Freeman is going to be your future. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, I think that's the big thing for them in these next couple of weeks is Josh Freeman. Does he get better and improve, and is he a quarterback who can lead us? And and they've they've got the rest of the year to find out. Jay Cutler's injury, and I'm I'm watching the NFL Network last night, and Brian Billick and. Uh, Steve Mariucci were talking about this, about Cutler's future in Chicago. I know he's going to be back, supposed to be back in four to six weeks from the injury, but, I mean, can you see Jay Cutler? Would you give Jay Cutler a $100 million contract extension if you're the Bears? I I wouldn't, and I think you may not need to do that. Um, I I think you've got to look, and hopefully he does get back, and you take the last four or five weeks. He was off to a a good start. The new offense seemed to suit him. He was doing some good things, not making the mistakes we've seen. If he can come back and in that last month of the the season in December lead you to to some wins, then I think you try to re-sign him at a reasonable rate. Now, if it gets ridiculous, um, I, then then maybe you move forward. But I, I think you've got to see in that last month what he really does in crunch time. Do you think Jay Cutler's a franchise quarterback? You know, I, I think he could be. Uh, not off of what I've seen so far, uh, but I, I think he could be. He's got the skills, and I was encouraged that this first month of, of what I'd seen in September and early October. I, I was very encouraged. So he he was playing better than I'd seen him play in a while. But there's no excuse why that offense isn't similar to what the Saints have. You have a talented tight end, two very talented big wide receivers, and I got Matt Forte. Unless I'm missing something there, I have to look at Cutler and say, is this an offense suited for him or is he the right guy for that offense? Well, they were doing some good things. They were putting up some numbers. And my big thing with Jay is I, I've got to see it in crunch time. When Those big games, when you go on the road and to Detroit or, or Green Bay and you've got to win them, then I want to see what you can do. But I, I, as I say, I was encouraged because I thought they were making progress, making strides. You're talking to Tony Dungy from Football Night in America. But can you teach crunch time here for guys like, you know, Cutler, 
Tony Romo, uh, some of these other to guys. Me, Dan, that's what determines if you're a franchise guy. If I can build around you, you know, you've got to be able to do it at that time. We, we were watching Andrew Luck, and he's got it. And in the big situation, the big moment, all of that with Peyton Manning coming back and everything, he throws three touchdowns, runs for one, no interceptions. He does it when you have to do it. That Either you have that or you don't. Do you see the tweets by uh, your former owner, Jim Ursay, at 3.30 3 in the morning? I didn't. I didn't. I heard about him. What, to, what did exactly did he say? Well, he referred to people as uh, bleep slingers and the oh, okay. haters – um, making too much of nothing. He credits uh, those who are haters for uh, motivating the team to win the game. I, I don't know. What is going on with Jim Mercer? I'm not sure. And, and the, the haters didn't motivate the team, believe me. The, the, the motivation came from uh, those guys going out to San Diego, not playing as well as they thought they could play. Uh, they realized they were going to have to deal a lot with the, the Peyton Manning issue. And, and you heard Robert Mathis on the post game say, you know, we, we had some good players here. We knew Peyton was great. He had a lot to do with our success, but we had some good players and we wanted to show that. So uh, I don't think the haters had anything to do with that game. I went back and watched the game again, and I wanted to see because – I, I didn't know if the Broncos played a good game or not. And I realized they really didn't play a very good game. And they could have won it. Hillman fumbles there inside the five. Imagine if they had won that game and they didn't play well. What would we be saying about the Colts and the Broncos today? Yeah, and, and the Broncos, they are you know, what they are, uh, as Denny Green would say. They, they've you know, had five turnovers. Still scored 33 points. Still had a chance to win it. Um, Manning wasn't great. They didn't get much out of Vaughn Miller. They got very little pass rush. So there's a lot of flaws, but they're going to be in every game. Uh, They're they're going to have a chance to put points on the board. Champ Bailey got hurt. You know that that hurt them. So they're they're you know they're not a perfect team, but nobody's going to want to play them. Nobody's going to want to say, hey, we can roll into Denver and and we're going to win. So they're they're in good shape. Indy is. A very, very good team at home. If they win enough games where they get some home games, they're going to be a tough out in the playoffs. And, and Andrew Luck's got that. You know, they, they went on the road and beat San Francisco handily in San Francisco, which not a lot of people have done. They've beaten Seattle at home. They've beaten Denver at home. Uh, so that, that's two good football teams. But you're right. You know, and, and I kind of even said, hey, Denver's got some flaws. But with all that said, they still put up 33 points, which is enough to win most games. Before I let you go, this Thursday night possibility of double headers. As a coach who had to prepare three days removed from a game with your players mentally and physically, and now the possibility that we'd have double headers on Thursday. How am I crazy? I mean, this we shouldn't even be playing on Thursday to begin with. Thursday night football is not good. Regular season is not good. It's not a good idea for the players. It doesn't do anybody a service. Now, uh, Thanksgiving, special nights, you do it one time. Hey, we know we've got to prepare for it. We're, we're doing it one time. That, that's something different. But to schedule regular Thursday night games, I think, is a, is a big mistake. Is it unsafe? I, I think it is. I mean, it, it's just something that, you have to be so conscious as a coach and take care of your guys and no really very light practices. But playing two games in four days, you can do it on a one-time basis, but on a regular deal without having buys, I think you'd have to, to schedule this whole thing and change it around and give buys and, and, and that kind of thing. It's just not good to play Sunday and then play Thursday. You can't talk about player safety tone and then play two games on Thursday night. It just, it, it, you know, it's it's hypocritical. The NFL. I, I agree. I don't think it's a good idea in terms of player safety. It, it's something that was hard to prepare for as a coach. Players don't like it. Um, I, I just think they need to think long and hard before going down that road. Good to visit with you. I'll see you next weekend. Sounds good, DP. Hi, Thanks. buddy. Tony Dungy, Football Night in America. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.